Hi, Andrew here. Today we're gonna to test some 300 AAC 123 grain power strike. This is another one of those weird bullets like I've been testing recently that has a, a copper jacket with a centered metal core. And 123 grain is a fairly standard bullet weight in this caliber, maybe a little on the heavy side. Uh, we've seen some good performance and some bad performance from these centered metal core bullets that I've been testing recently. So I have a difficult time predicting how this one's gonna go. We're gonna shoot it out of my eight inch ARFCOM upper into calibrated 10% ballistic gelatin. Let's get out to the range and take a look. Okay, wow. You know what this reminds me of is that extreme shock ammo from back in the 90s, maybe early 2000s. This uh, sort of centered metal that fragments explosively, but a sort of rifle version of it. Now, if we measure to the depth of like the majority of fragments, just short of 12 inches. But a couple of these tiny little pieces made it to a little over 14. The deepest one went to 14.2 inches. So technically a pass, but these are tiny fragments there. The majority of the dis tissue destruction stops a little bit short of 12 inches. So that's a bit of a judgment call on your part as to whether that meets the standard or not. If it fails to meet the standard, that's only by a bit. Uh, would it be useful for hunting small to medium-sized game like tiny little Texas deer and whatnot? Yeah, sure. Uh, the neck is not great. About, about five inch long neck. The disruption left from the TSC is fairly big at about four inches by seven inches, fairly respectable. Let's take a look at the top here. Here you can see those, those other little fragments. That's the deepest one that I measured, but you can see what I was talking about, about how the tissue destruction stops at roughly 12 inches. Move the camera around, we'll take a look at the other side of the block. Okay, so you can see a little better from this side with the light coming through the back of the block. Still, this is the area of disruption, but this is what I couldn't see. We're looking at what was the bottom of the block a moment ago. And I couldn't see this fragment of jacket here from that angle. So let's get a penetration measurement on this. That's gonna be the important figure there. Okay, so that's 14.2 inches. And given the size of that fragment, I'd say that that's legitimate as far as a penetration measurement goes. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, it's still not, <laughs> still not huge. It's just the very small portion left over from the base of the jacket. Looks like the entire bullet fragmented inside of the block here which of course does result in a fair amount of energy transfer if you believe in that sort of thing. Lots of temporary stretch cavity. Um, you're tempted to throw around words that the experts usually disregard, like things like shock and energy and whatnot. And for the most part, those don't generally relate to wounding. Here's a closer look at the jacket. We'll take some photos when I get home. Okay, so first of all, the stretch cavity that we see in the high speed looks absolutely brutal. It's super impressive. Uh, but 
is that subjective appearance borne out by the empirical data? Well, kind of. Um, that is, most of these metrics are just about right. That's kind of what we want to see. Um, but there's a little bit more under the thin veneer of the numbers, if you will. Uh, what I mean is, yes, the penetration figure is adequate. Yes, that exceeds the 12-inch minimum. However, the part that exceeded that 12-inch minimum is just a thin shard of the jacket, which weighed almost nothing. We saw almost complete fragmentation. Then on the other hand, that temporary stretch cavity, that stirred up area with all the fragments and weird crap going on in it, that brutal area extended almost to 12 inches. Usually we see a temporary stretch cavity that goes, oh, I don't know, like six or eight inches deep, maybe 10 inches at the most, and then the core of the bullet continues on to meet that 12 inch minimum. In this case, that big badass area that's turning stuff into hamburger, that part was going to 12 inches. So that on its own, or close to 12 inches. So that on its own, is that's pretty impressive. Uh, I'm not really sure how to call this one. There are a lot of different ways to look at it. And uh, for one thing, if you are concerned about over penetration, then this may be a very good choice for you. A lot of the really good ammunition out there in 300 AAC also penetrates more than we'd like to see. For example, the load that's widely considered to be the very best ammunition available in 300 AAC is 110 grain TAC TX. That goes well past the 18 inch max recommended by the FBI. Again, I'm not an expert. Don't take my opinions as meaning anything other than what you paid for them. But I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. So if you have any questions, any disagreement, I would love to hear that especially. And if you'd like to find out how you can rent a phantom high-speed camera just like the one that I used for this test, get in touch with Aimed Research. Their contact information is in the doobly-doo. They'll get you squared away. Have a great day.